after one date um it just wasn't for him and he prefers to not say anything than deal with your disappointment jenny mama i love it i love i love the i love like mothers and daughters um i had somebody message me the other day say that um uh, they're getting uh, my books for them and their mom <laughs> i'm getting your book because my mom needs it too and i'm like <laughs> right on girl that's so awesome. That's so awesome. And it looks like you're a fan too. So maybe. All right. Eh? Eh? <laughs> you guys are so awesome. Yeah. So you know what? About ghosting, guys, we are creatures designed to avoid pain and seek pleasure. And there is certain pain in disappointing people because, uh, you know, it's you have to deal with their disappointment. Oh, why didn't it work? Or, you know, they, they don't know how people are going to come back. So, yes, I always read them after my mom does. That's so good. I love it when you guys lend out my books, when you pass it on. Super, super amazing. Let's get the education out there. Knowledge is power. Let's just, we're just going to be powerful. Because, listen, it's so obvious when women, like, you know, come into themselves. When women take control of their lives. Take control of their destiny, take control of their emotions, take control of their behaviors, take control of their choices, men benefit, right? Just going back to this comment here, I thought our relationship was done because of him, but I realized it's also me, so it's so good now. Like, that is female empowerment, and do you think he's happy too? Damn fucking right he is. Damn fucking right he is. So women coming into themselves and taking charge of themselves benefits men. It makes them so happy. It gives them a happy, safe, secure place to come home to at the end of the day. How do I tell my strict parents I'm moving out? Um, get your place. Get your place first, right? Because once you tell them, you want to be gone. You don't want to you know, stay. If they're going to be difficult about it, get everything set up first and tell them and then go. Don't tell them and then, you know, stay stuck. So it, I'm moving out. Sounds like you do have your place. Um, be all ready to move in basically and say, mom, dad, I love you. And I appreciate that you have worked so hard to prepare me for this world. And I've become an amazing young adult because of the work you've done. And I appreciate that. And it's time for me now to step into adulthood and take care of myself. And that's exactly what I'm doing. My boyfriend prioritizes video games over me and I don't feel desired. What should I do? Uh, well, I mean... So are you saying he spends zero time with you? Is there zero balance, like no time for you ever? Are you sure you're not overlooking anything? If you're not overlooking anything, um, if, if that's the fact that he just does not spend any time with you whatsoever, then why be in a relationship with somebody who's indifferent that you're there? How to schedule a session with you. Go to my bio, click on the link tree, click the coaching button. It's gonna take you to a page, follow the instructions. You can book yourself in for a session. Uh, how do you set boundaries with an ex-spouse? So the only reason you should be talking to somebody that you feel you need to set boundaries with um, should be because you have children. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna say, I am only going to communicate with you about the children. Any other communication is just not appropriate for us at this stage in our relationship. And then anything they communicate with you that's, uh, you know, anything besides the kids, you simply don't respond. I'm working on how I react and respond my boyfriend isn't used to new responses. How do I tell him I'm trying? Um, 
you you don't you don't need to uh like just it it doesn't matter what you say what matters is what you do right so be consistent in the behaviors like the the better behaviors the more functional behaviors that you're doing and the only time you bring up what you're doing is when they accuse you of doing the opposite for instance i was managing my own behaviors and i wasn't picking fights with my husband anymore but he still thought I was because his brain was still cycling on how we used to be. And he came home angry one day and he said, you do this. And I said, when was the last time you remember me doing that? And he thought about it and he said, well, it's been two or three months. And I said, that's because I've been being very conscious about my behaviors and I've been meditating as well, which reduces my reactivity. And so I haven't been doing those behaviors because I've been more in control of myself. And the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. If it's been three months since you remember me doing this, you can anticipate another three months of me not doing this. And it kind of left him dumbfounded. So that's when you want to bring up what you're doing, when you can use it as a fact. But don't say, I'm trying. I'm trying is not enough. Do the behaviors and be consistent with the behaviors. Yeah. Baby? Baby? <gasps> Baby love? You want to come live with me? It's shower time. Yeah, my baby. Um, my boyfriend just moved to England. How to discuss being in a long distance relationship? Uh, discuss just move to England how to discuss being in a long distance relationship so I have a long distance guide for you you can find it in the link to my bio it's free so go ahead and download that it's filled with tips on how to maintain a long distance relationship uh how do I move on from an ex who I didn't do anything wrong but I still love him if you need to move on from a breakup get comeback queen this is the book that helps you through those emotions How do I become closer with my boyfriend's family? Um, so be respectful, always be respectful because if you encroach too much in them, they're going to push back, you know, sort of like, mm. so be really respectful, uh, you know, pay attention to what they seem to like and look to contribute in those ways. to tell my mom I'm going on a date with a guy from online think think about what your mom would want for you right she would want you to be safe so make sure that you're going on this date in a way that's safe you're meeting in a public place you're staying in a public place you're not getting in his car these are things that your mom are going to worry about so make sure you have this date set up in such a way that you can reassure her that you're being careful my husband's playing with the dog he only spends time with me when we are sleeping or eating for an hour or two to watch a movie. Hello, lovelies. Um, oh, oh, hey, hello. Queen, hello, lovely, my beautiful. You're so welcome, love. Uh, how can I trust again after a heartbreak? Knowledge is power. Knowledge is confidence. So get no more assholes. Understand who you need to choose. How to use that no kissing for three months dating rule. Have a time and space boundary before you choose somebody for a relationship and you'll feel much more confident with the dating process. Charlie's being a loud boy. Yes. Hi. Hello, Liz. How to spot red flags. Use that no kissing for three months dating rule. You won't spot them if you're... If you're all fogged up with all those chemicals that happen when you start kissing and having sex. My boyfriend definitely doesn't love himself, but says he loves me. Can this be possible? Anything is possible. Oh, Chinese is so cute. Why am I so upset that my ex left me even though I was the one uh, cheated on twice and still stayed? Um because we seek what's familiar even if it's wrong for us 
It's been a few days of changed behavior and boyfriend not responding nicely yet. I withhold from defensive. So it's not changed behavior. Uh, and, and days doesn't make a difference, right? It's not the days. It's when you can look back at your, like when I said earlier, it's been two or three months. That's when you can start actually saying, hey, I have been using change behaviors. One or two days doesn't make a difference. Anybody can change for one or two days. Anybody can be nice for one or two days. If you can point to the last three months and go, hey, I've been stepping up and doing the right things for the past three months. And it's time for you to realize that if you don't keep up with me, I will outgrow you. But one or two days and then you go into this defensive mode and you go into poopy mode, you're not changing at all. You're not, you're not, you're not even doing it for the right reasons. You're doing it as a manipulation and you go into poopy mode when it doesn't immediately have an effect, which means your behavior change isn't you doing it because you know it's the right thing to do and you're taking pleasure from doing the right thing and you understand that you are doing this because you want to become a more functional person you're saying i'm doing this to get him to change and manipulation does not work we all pick up on manipulation nobody likes to be manipulated so on top of being poopy you're being manipulative and so of course he's like i'm not in for this of course you're of course he's not of course it's not working you're not doing it from the right place you're not doing it with the right intention the intention is i'm going to choose to not have fights in my relationship anymore and making your behaviors match your intent your intent is not for you to be a better person your intent is to change him and that's why it's not working What about domestic abuse, physical and verbal? I'm not sure what to do. It's been five days separated. You do not stay in a relationship with an abusive person, period. We are wording. Can you talk about your three month rule when you haven't been able to date for so long? Uh, you need to read No More Assholes, my love. Is it controlling to not want your boyfriend liking other girls' pictures? He says it's okay and I don't know what to do. Whose picture is he liking? Is it friends? Have you met these friends? By the way, if you haven't met them, they're not friends. They're ego strokes, just to be clear. Just to be clear, if you have not met them, they are ego strokes. Charlie's going crazy with the bone right now. Um, so is that whose pictures he's liking? His ego strokes? Is he liking half naked Instagram models who are selling their OnlyFans pages subscriptions and looking for more clients? Whose picture is he liking? Is it the platonic friends that you know about and have met and are part of your friend circle? My boyfriend told me I look like a lost puppy without him during a fight. What do I do to be better? You want to stop fighting in your relationship? If that's what you want to do, then get fixed that shit. Oh, this is cute. Now before I even get upset, your voice comes into my head and I remember the tools and it calms me. You're not the first person to say that they hear my voice in their head. Who? <laughs> I love that. You're not the first person to say that, and I love hearing that. That's so good. That's so good. Is it hard to go back to a person after being away from them for two plus years? It can be for some. If a guy I'm dating tries to kiss me, how do I stop him during using the three month no kissing rule? You have to tell him about your rule before he moves in for a kiss if he moves in for a kiss after you've discussed this with him do not continue seeing him because he doesn't care about you he cares about getting what he wants when he wants it which means he is selfish you don't want to be with somebody who is selfish but always tell them about the rule before they move in for a kiss guys who wants a notification when i go live say i do When do you leave a relationship? If you're not sure if you should stay or go, come get a coaching session. But if it's abusive, definitely go. Never stay for that. Never stay with someone abusive.
got okay so those of you who want a notification when i go live click my picture up here once or twice you're going to get a pop-up and the pop-up is a bell click on the bell charlie do we really need to do that here can you can you do that somewhere else uh click on the bell when you do that say i just did how to recover Oh, uh, my got to go. Chicken wing, chicken wing, hot dog and bologna, chicken and macaroni. Chilling with my homie. Chicken wing, chicken wing. Uh, I just did. Lovely. Awesome. How to recover from a toxic ex? when you have kids and they have never stopped manipulating and lying. Um, well, you can get come back queen to overcome the emotions. I was waiting for you to get on. Hello, lovely. Hot dog and bologna, chicken and macaroni. Are you so comfortable in your skin? I admire you for it. Thank you. Thank you. What happens if someone robbed you? You call the bullies. I keep asking my partner to share chores, but they keep uh, trying to position me as a parent. Uh, have a board meeting and like, like track. Track who pays what, who does what for 30 days. And leave nothing off. If they pay for a, a meal, you write it down. If you pay for a meal, you write it down. If they bought groceries, what amount? If you bought groceries, what amount? If they paid a bill, what amount? Track everything that was done and everything that was paid for for 30 days. Figure out who's paying the percentage, who's doing the percentage, and go to your partner and say there's an inequality here. I've noticed that you pay this percentage, but you only do this percentage. I need you to make this equal so that this comes out fairly. You can pay somebody to do your share of the chores or I can pay less of the expenses. And if you don't agree to one of those two, this relationship is not going to work for me because I don't want to be in a relationship where I'm taken advantage of. Hot dog and bologna, chicken and macaroni, chicken wing, chicken wing. Uh, wondering how to communicate. Uh, so bedroom stuff I only do on one-on-one -on -one sessions. I don't do them on lives. But the audiobook of Fix That Shit. Uh, it's already opened my eyes to a lot of things. Thank you. You're so welcome. All about the evolution. Love it. Love it. Thank you. Very good advice. You're welcome. When I've done that in regards of inequality, he turns it around, says I'm throwing it back in his face. So you don't have to like the truth but this is the truth and if you refuse to do something about the truth and make it fair this is not the relationship for me because i will not be in a relationship where i'm being taken advantage of boyfriend is choosing his friends over me recently what do i do don't parent can you can you can you do stuff can you be busy can you Practice some self-love. Can you spend some time with your friends? Can you dive into your hobby? Can you uh, understand what your purpose and passion is and monetize it? <clears throat> <coughs> Have you read Fix That Shit? Are you doing what's in that book? Is, is it because there's conflict and it's more comfortable to be away from home than it is to be home? 
if you want me to understand your situation and give you some help with that because these are all you know shots in the dark I have no idea because until you do a session I don't know enough about what's going on to actually give you professional advice this is not professional advice here this is worth every single penny you pay so if you actually want help with something you do need to get a coaching session why Uh, financially, we agreed that we would share rent based on how much we make. She makes more than me, so she pays more. Okay. Uh, how do I start to fix it? You can get fix that shit. Okay, so you read it. So you got it. You got the book. You got to read it. You got to do what's in it. First paragraph, uh, first paragraph of intro and intro, first paragraph of intro and comeback queen describes my marriage. Ooh, this is why people love my books because they find them so relatable. I heard my boyfriend and his coworkers talking about girls. Is that a reply? What were they saying? Boyfriend has been sneaking medications into my breakfast. What do I do? Dump the motherfucker? Did you hear that? Like right? Wow. Was it was uh, was it good? Did you trip? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, baby? What should she do? I would worry. Yeah. Maybe she needs them. I don't know, but uh, I mean, sounds scary. Sounds scary. Are you coming to get the lotion? I'm already doing it. You put on the lotion. I am. <laughs> baby, I love you. You need me to make you some food? Uh, I'm gonna go do some paperwork. I just have to be clean. Okay. You wanna take some pie with you? I'll, I'll handle the pancakes. Okay, baby. Uh, he said I needed to be microdosed for anxiety. So what, what did he put in it? What did he put in your food? Medications. What did he put in? Uh, what else can I do if she pays more rent, but we're both equally work for you? Here's the thing though. If you paid an equal share, how many hours would you need to work to pay that equal share? How many hours are you not working to make the money that you're not paying? And the money that you're not paying, you can hire somebody to do that part of the housework. Because, you know, an, an equal split means uh, if you're paying 50%, then you're doing 50%. But if you're paying 20%, then you're doing 80%. You're responsible. If you're paying less, you are responsible for, for doing more, right? Because that's, that's an equal split. It's so pretty. He puts CBD drops in and occasionally use some Benadryl to put you to sleep. What the hell? Well, obviously you know about it, um, right? You know about it, and it sounds like so. Here's here's what I'm gathering from this. You're complaining about things, but you're not doing anything about it. And he's going, okay, maybe if I do something for her, then she's not going to feel the way she's feeling and stop complaining about it. If you want him, like he's, he's, it sounds like he's trying to help you. He's trying to help you be less anxious. He's trying to help you sleep better. You need to start meditating because it will help you be less anxious and it will help you sleep better. Thank you for everything you do to help all of us. You're welcome. Uh, she makes his figures. I make 65K. We're both equally tired because we're the same on ours. But the money you're not spending, the money you're saving, can be used towards paying somebody to help you with the housework. She's paying more, you're paying less. So take some of your savings and pay somebody to come in a few hours a week and do the floors and do the vacuuming.
Thank you so much. This is so helpful. I have a meditation, uh, like a free meditation guide button in the link to my bio. This is a starter page to get you started on meditation. Uh, there's a meditation guide to download. There's a track to start with. Uh, there's a video to help you understand how to get started. So dive into meditation, but um, this is this is going to help you with what it is he's trying to help you with. Brilliant, yes. What to do if she says she has love for you, but she's not in love with you anymore? Um, ask her, say, where do we go from here? What do you want? Do you want us to work on this? I've been seeing a guy for a little over two months. How do I go about knowing if it's exclusive? So you go to him and you say, hey, I just want to let you know I'm done my playtime and I really want a committed long-term relationship because I really want to get married one day, buy a house, have kids. What about you? And if he says, oh, no, I'm not ready for that, then you're going to say, okay, I need to be available for the person who wants a relationship. So this is going to need to end because I can't be caught up with somebody who doesn't want what I want. Even hubby had to react to that one. Yeah, he sure did. Uh, how do you create desire and enjoy your own time when your hubby makes plans without you? Uh, get fixed that shit, my love, so that you can learn to manage your emotions um, and get custom made because it sounds like codependence, right? If you're upset that your partner makes plans without you, that's codependence. Um, and so you need to manage your emotions and understand that space is okay in a relationship and you need to fill up your own time with your purpose and your passion. And if you don't know what that is, then custom made answers two questions. What is my purpose and passion and how can I monetize it? Boyfriend broke up because of my insecurities. I've moved but still have stuff at his house I need to get. Okay, so send him a text and say, when when can I come get my stuff? What do I do for fun? Baby love, what do I do for fun? He just laughed. I think you, this is what you do for fun. Yeah, <laughs> did you hear that? He goes, this is what you do for fun. Yeah, I'd say so. These days, anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi. Um, hey, yeah. baby. What did you used Hi. to do? Hi. 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 <laughs> Sorry, babe. Ah, uh -huh. he's so <laughs> handsome. Well, I, I can't show that to people. Uh -huh. <laughs> I love you. I love you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm sticky. It's okay. Oh. That's so nice. Hey, imagine being clean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's my man. <laughs> yes, you do. Yeah. I just came upon your account and I just adore you and your advice. Thank you. <laughs> you guys. You guys are so cute. That's my man. I love him. I love him so much. It must be nice to have a relationship like that. It is. That's why I want this for you. I want this for you. I missed your lives. Welcome back, lovely. Dang, I just missed him. Yes. Yeah, he didn't come and sit. He just came and gave me a kiss. I can literally feel the love through the phone. So sweet. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Ah, I love him. I love him. He's such a good man. Uh, what do you do if a partner seems like they can't meet those needs? Um, come get a coaching session, love, just so that I can understand what your needs are and what is actually happening in the relationship. 
because it's uh, th th this is not a blanket answer, not a blanket answer. As a professionalist, professionalist, as a behaviorist, as a behaviorist, um, I need to know what's going on. I, I, there's there is no blanket answer for that. So beautiful, yes. Do you feel that way every day about him? Yeah, I do. I do. I do. It's just, it's like, mm, it's just, mm, mm. <laughs> uh, we've been, okay. I already have a boyfriend as soon as we met, we kissed. Is there anything, any way to restart? You introduced the chemical called phenylethylamine that shuts down the red flag alert. So now you're in the good luck zone. Uh, good luck. I hope it works out. Either, you know, hopefully you had good intuition or you have good luck, but you're not counting on knowledge to tell you what you need to know before getting things started with this person. You two are adorable. So sweet. And see how I love you guys are. Yes. That's my man. It's my man. Love your content. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. I work hard for you. Guys, who here wants a notification when I go live? Say, I do. Who wants a notification when I go live? Say, I do. Oh, I was going to send an email today. <gasps> Your advice made those same feelings come back for me towards my boyfriend. Love it. Yes. I love your content on waiting on intimacy. Here's the thing. It's it's not waiting on intimacy. It's waiting on sexuality and seeing if genuine intimacy is formed because no kissing does not mean no affection. But when we kiss by the fourth date, it is a fear-based action. If I don't kiss by this time, I will lose an opportunity to get into a relationship. And that's the brainwashing that we have, right? That dialogue is brainwashing. Now, when you say, you know what, I'm not, I'm not doing that. Like that doesn't even make sense. I want a long-term relationship, not a hookup. So I need to know who the person is because like I'm, I'm picking a baby daddy. I'm picking a husband, right? Like I should, I should know them before, right? So when you say no kissing for three months, you go, I'm not giving into the fear. I'm not giving you a, a sexual act. Kissing, make no mistake, is a sexual act. The chemical released in a kiss creates an aphrodisiac. This is why kissing precedes sex. So it is a sexual act. I'm not giving you a sexual act until I know you better. And what you do is you give yourself time and space. So three months and no sleepover. So time and space to get to know the person better. And if you start to like them, like not just like how they look, like who they are, and you are appreciating what you find out about them, appreciation tends to create affection. So as you create genuine affection, then you start to show genuine affection. That is what it, intimacy is. Intimacy is appreciation and affection. So if you can create real intimacy before sexual intimacy, then you have something that's much more solid than creating sexual intimacy first and hoping it develops into real intimacy. We, the way we were doing it, and me too, you guys, make no mistake, like, you know, no kissing for three months was new to me, like in my 30s, late 30s. Um, but, oh, oh, starting a sexual relationship and hoping we develop a friendship and genuine intimacy is ass backwards. Develop the friendship and genuine intimacy and then go to sexual intimacy. And you will have the kind of partner that sticks through you through thick and thin because they've already shown you that they have staying power and desire for you that goes beyond just sexuality. Not enough people are teaching this, I know. The revolutionary enter the revolution. Uh, what do you do if your boyfriend says your friends look like celebrity, but at least he didn't fuck her? That sounds rude. I 
Best advice for singleness? Get no more assholes. Be prepared for when you want to start dating. Charlie. Hi, Charlie. I'm glad you're enjoying your chew toy. Hi, you're a goodest boy. Yes, you are. You're my good boy. Uh, what if you develop that genuine appreciation and then you aren't sexually compatible work on it? Yeah, like here's the thing. We're built different. The way you like to be touched isn't the way I like to be touched. So that compatibility happens because of practice. It happens because of practice. So put in the practice and the communication and give the time for the development. Like it took my husband a while to figure me out and I let him have the time to do it. I was patient with him. I was instructive with him. And he is by far the best I have ever had in my entire life. In my entire life, he's the best kisser, he's the best toucher, he's the best in everything, in everything. And it took some time, it took some time. But we are so compatible as humans. Our affection is so compatible that it was just one small leap to get the last little bit in, that's it. What do you think is the foundation of being in love, uh, gratitude, and appreciation? My ex, why does my ex keep coming back to leave again? Wrong question. Life begins when you ask the right question. That's the wrong question. That is the wrong question. The question is, why do you keep letting him? because he keeps coming back because you keep letting him right like you are so convenient every time i come back she takes me back right how convenient how convenient so convenient i feel lonely she'll take me back i want some sex she'll take me back it's so convenient question is why do you let him why are you letting him why are you letting him best predictor future behavior is past behavior why are you setting yourself up for more disappointment why have you not blocked him yet are you going to block him tonight? Are you done with this yet? Are you ready to move on yet? Are you done with the interruption to your life yet? <clears throat> my ex was my friend for a year before anything happened and then he betrayed me. So I guess the no kissing for three months rule doesn't work. So let's all stop wearing seatbelts because some people don't survive car crashes. Is that right? Should we all stop wearing seatbelt because some people don't survive car crashes? I fear that my trauma is a wedge in our relationship. You can get coaching and, and gain some tools to work through that. How do I stop overthinking? Uh, start meditating. <clears throat> Starting to meditate is a really good place to start. There's a lot more that you can do. So if you wanna dive into a coaching session, we can um, get into what it is that's happening with you and I can give you the tools that you need to work through this. But if you want to start with something, start with meditation. There is a button in the link to my bio that says free meditation guide. You can tap into that and get started with meditation. Favorite thing about my husband. Oh God, one. <laughs> um, I love how affectionate he is. He's wonderfully affectionate. Uh, I was on FaceTime and saw your live and said, oh my God, I gotta go. The dating coach is live. <laughs> Priorities. That's so cute. That's adorable. Uh, what if he said he wants to be friends with benefits but get jealous easily of other people? Just because he wants to own your vajayjai doesn't mean he wants to be a contributor to your life. All he's doing is peeing on your vajayjai. So he has to go. He has to go because he, he wants to interfere with your ability to get into a healthy relationship while he offers you none of that. So you need to cut him off.
because he is being a disruptor for you. He's not good for you. If you want a relationship, go get a relationship, but your friends with benefits should not be territorial. He doesn't have the right. Amen. My boyfriend and I have a hard time communicating and getting peace back after an argument um, or finding resolution. You need to get fix that shit and do what is in that book. <clears throat> What's my love language? I have two, uh, physical affection and words of affirmation. Is it ever too early to go to couples therapy? No, it's not, knowledge is power. Knowledge is power, no, no, no. I do couples coaching. You're welcome. Do you believe in taking breaks in a relationship? A break is always a breakup, just so you know. It means you are single. Um, so if you can, instead of breaking up, uh, you can get fix that shit, do what's in that book. But if you guys do take a break, it is a breakup. You are not together. What's my husband's favorite thing about me? Uh, so when we ask him that, he says that I'm easy. And I mean, we're not, we're not... <laughs> I mean, I am easy that way with him, of course, because, you know, I love him. Uh, but I'm easy. Like, I make life easy. I'm easy to be with. Um, I don't, I'm not reactive. Um, you know, we don't fight. Life is very easy with us. I'm I'm very caring towards him. Like, you know, you saw when, when he came home, I'm like, do you need anything? Do you want me to get you some food? So I, I look after him and I'm easy to be around and I'm easy to be with. Boyfriend wants to break up because I'm dragging him back from going on adventures. What to do? Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. Let him, let him go. I, he's, listen, your mantra is I don't want to be with anybody who doesn't want to be with me. That is your mantra. Uh, get no more assholes and get with a generous long-term thinker. Boyfriend doesn't hang out with me as much anymore. He says it's because I nag and complain too much. Um, so if he's a generous long-term thinker, you can get fix that shit and understand how to navigate relationships in a functional way. If he's a selfish short-term thinker, get, dump his ass and get no more assholes. Can you guys hear Charlie in the background? Tips for letting go after a breakup. So Comeback Queen is the book that helps you move on from your last relationship. Recommendations on a woman being with a man 20 years younger, as long as he's over 25. Have fun, baby girl. My boyfriend told me you're a handful and I like it. Is that bad or maybe I'm overthinking? Did you hear what he said? Like, it's, it's like, um, uh, what's the word here I'm looking for? Um, uh, anyways, like, like, did you like read this again? Read all of it. Don't just, uh, don't, don't have an ego reaction to just parts of it. Absorb all of it. Absorb everything that he says. Be a word nerd with men. Like really pay attention to what they say. But don't have selective hearing. Pay attention to everything they say. He's over 25. Good, good, good. Have fun, my love. <clears throat> Would Comeback Queen help with overcoming multiple relationships from your past? I believe so, yeah. Word nerd, that's right. We need to be word nerds with men because men don't use the wrong words, right? Um, men are precise with their language. Actually, that's why men like me because I'm precise with my language. Uh, I speak man, but yeah, men are very precise with their language. So pay attention to what they say. And, and you know, listen, he said, I like it, right? I like it. Why are you dismissing that? Why are you dismissing the positive? 
how do you make it easy to be around? Uh, I meditate. I take responsibility for my behaviors and my emotions. I think about everything before I say it. Um, I don't need to so much anymore. I'm not as negative or insecure as I used to be, but I overcame negativity and insecurity by meditation and, and being very mindful of what I was gonna do before I did it. My husband is so caring and does everything for me. I tend to be mean because of how I feel. Um, get fixed, I shit my love and start being a more functional and gracious and grateful partner. Tips on avoiding narcissists. I tend to attract that type of guy and I want something different. Get no more assholes and use the no kissing for three months dating rule and compare the people that you meet against the 12 character traits and don't kiss anybody before three months. No kissing, no sex, no sleepovers before three months. What does it mean if a past relationship is still on my mind? You don't get amnesia just because you get into a new relationship. Everybody you meet owns a neural pathway in your brain. I now own a neural pathway in your brain. You will continue to think about me periodically for the rest of your life. Deal with it. It's okay. It doesn't mean anything. All it means is I had this happen in my life and it carved a neural pathway in my brain and every now and then, there will be some activity in that neural pathway. You have a ton of other memories about a ton of other things that come up in your mind randomly, but you don't freak out about those. So why are you freaking out about this? <laughs> you guys like that? How did you become a dating coach? Uh, why do you love it? Um, so this came to me, people have been coming, to, like I'm 48 now, people have been coming to me since I was in my, like 24, um, calling me all upset about the stuff going on in their lives. And then 10 minutes, they're like, oh, I feel so much better, you're so soothing. So this has been going on for over 20 years now. Um, and I just went, okay, I'm gonna brand it. And so I built a business. What do I love about it? When you guys take my advice and use it and then tell me how you are better and happier, I am emotionally rewarded. It is, it is my life, it is my oxygen, it's what makes me feel so super good. You guys asked earlier, what do I do for fun? And, and I asked my husband, cause he was in the house and he laughed and he goes, this is what you do for fun. Like this is fun for me because, ah, thank you. Uh, I'm custom made, you guys. I'm custom made to get a high of making other people feel good. That's me. This is so awesome, yes. <laughs> uh, what does it mean of past relationship? Right, 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 we did that. We did that. He loves me, but I don't feel the same yet. How long should I date to see if I fall in love too? Uh, give it six months. Why does my husband yawn every single time I express my sadness? So worries, this is normal. So dogs yawn to alleviate anxiety. Maybe when you were talking about your anxious feelings, he has an empathetic reaction to it and he yawns to alleviate his anxiety. How to cultivate more feminine energy, not solely external. Uh, meditation. I think meditation can help with that. Thanks for doing the live. You're so welcome. What licensing do you need to be a coach? None. There is no, uh, there is no body that overlooks coaching whatsoever. Uh, I'm a therapist, but coaching sounds like freedom. Yeah, you know why I chose coaching? Um, because my ex-husband's next wife is a child psychologist and she said you're not supposed to share your story and you're not supposed to tell them what to do and I said well that's quite the opposite of what I want to do and that's when I realized I didn't want to work in an organization that I needed to work for myself and so instead of becoming a therapist I became a coach 
because that way I could do it my way and not have somebody tapping me on the shoulder going, that's not how we're supposed to do it. You're so amazing. Thank you. You're so welcome. Uh, how do I show my boyfriend? I really am working on bettering our relationship. I bought your book, but how? You don't, you, so uh, you just do. You have to do. You have to do. You have to do every single day. Be consistent with your do. Absolutely consistent with your do. Um, it doesn't matter what you say. What matters is what you do. Get day after day, week after week, month after month of you being consistent what is in this book. And that is exactly how you will show him. I told my boyfriend I feel like I'm going to be the breadwinner of the family because he doesn't know how to save money and he got upset with me. Yeah, the truth hurts, motherfucker. The truth hurts. And if he's only going to get upset and he's not actually going to do something about it, don't stay with him don't listen 12 character traits one of them is being financially responsible if he's not financially responsible you cannot build a life with him don't do that don't stay in a relationship with somebody that you will end up parenting when it comes to finances have a peer peer relationship not a parent child relationship if he can't man up and get smarter with his money dump the motherfucker and get with a man because guys and boys spend their money like they're idiots. Men do not. What are the 12? You got to get no more assholes to uh, dive into the 12 character traits um, because you need what is in this book. I am not giving that information away. Little secret, if you go through all my content with a fine tooth comb, you will find the 12. I'm just not going to tell you where it is. Um, because I want you to buy the book, because I want you to get all the information in there, because if you're asking about the 12 character traits, you don't understand what a man is yet, and you need to, and you need to have this book at your fingertips so that you understand who you need to be with in a relationship. Been with my boyfriend for over a year. He's still not ready for me to meet his kids. Normal? Not at all. Not at all. You need to have a conversation with him. Uh, did you come up with the 12 character traits yourself? I sure did. But you know how you know how I came up with them? I went, what's my husband? Those 12 character traits, that's my man. Uh, so still not ready for me to meet his kids. So what you're going to say to him is I've been doing some thinking and I really need to be in a relationship with somebody who includes me in their life. Because the way this is going, I feel like I'm in a relationship with somebody who's not in a relationship with me because I'm not included in your life. And I'm tired of waiting for that to happen. So I need to leave this relationship so I can be with the person who will include me in their life. Recommendations for building trust and honesty with husband. Uh, trust and so I mean, honesty is is be honest. Trust comes with consistency of behavior. So be consistently honest. You're welcome, lovely. Guys, use that no kissing for three months dating rule. If somebody doesn't introduce you to their people, like if you're a mom, don't, don't kiss somebody until they've met your kids and you've seen them interact. Don't pick a family member and then dump them on the kids and go, hey kids, got your new daddy right like that's not fair that's not okay you need to see how they are before you choose somebody and bring them into your family so that's that's for you to understand don't pick somebody that you don't know gets along with your kids yet and when it comes to their kids if they're not introducing you to their friends if they're not introducing you to their kids and you say hey how come i'm not meeting them and they say it's too early it's too early. I'm not comfortable with that yet. Say, I understand, but it's too early for us to kiss because I'm not going to get into a relationship with somebody who's not comfortable with me yet. So if you need more time to get to know me, then let's take more time. But I'm not committing to somebody who isn't committed to me. I'm not playing the hoping game and kissing you and hoping you will make me a part of your life. I will not get into a relationship with somebody who doesn't feel comfortable with me. So I will not kiss somebody who doesn't feel comfortable with me. Uh, 
I hang out with my boyfriend and his friends all the time, but he recently declined hanging with mine, which upset me. He He's allowed, my love. We don't need to micromanage our partners so much. It's okay. It's okay. And are you hanging out with his friends because you want him to hang out with yours and that's why you're doing it and it's a manipulation? Don't be manipulative. If you do something, do it because you want to. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. Um right? If you don't want to do it, don't do it. But don't do it and then resent him because he's not doing the same for you. That means you man you were doing something as a manipulation, which isn't okay. It's not okay. It's not okay to be manipulative. You're amazing. Thank you. Guys, who wants a notification when I go live? Say I do. How do I bring up wanting him to be more responsible with his money when I'm not necessarily perfect? Then you cannot, right? Then you cannot. You cannot, Is my number one relationship rule is it's not fair to ask for anything you're not willing to do first. You can't ask him to be what you're not. If you're not financially responsible, you can't say you need to be financially responsible. So you have to you have to model what it is you want them to be. I do, okay, my I do's. Click my picture up here once or twice, you're gonna get a pop-up, and the pop-up is a bell. Click on the bell. My boyfriend is showing more and more signs of control. I've been so happy, but I don't know where three years. So uh, lay a boundary, say, hey, I will not be in a relationship with somebody who's trying to have a parent-child relationship with me. I don't know where this behavior is coming from, but you need to do some work and rein this in before this becomes a problem in our relationship because I won't stay in a relationship with somebody who's trying to be controlling. Do you have any advice if I act cool towards him because I'm scared of intimacy in relationships? My advice is to come get a coaching session, love. I just I just can't do a coaching session on a live. I could listen to you all day. So good. Love it. Okay, but seriously, how do you look 35? Are you vegan or something? Grass fed. Uh so um not vegan, but vegetarian, most like not most meals, but like okay, some meals. Um, but the meat I eat is grass fed. Um Lots of water, Cocoon Apothecary Skincare. If you go into my TikToks and you see the ones where I have a towel on my head, I've at her um, her TikTok, so you can find Cocoon Apothecary on TikTok. But that is the skincare that I use, and it is phenomenal. Does your emotional leadership philosophy mean you disagree with wanting men to lead the relationship? We, we both need to be leaders, but we need to lead with our strengths. So... Um, if you want your relationship to be better, then refix that shit and use the advice in here and become the emotional leader. But both of us are leaders in our relationship. My husband brings his strengths and I bring my strengths. Thank you, Cocoon Apothecary. Yes. Uh, healthy you. Hi, my mom. Thank you. You're so welcome. Where did you get all this knowledge? I didn't hear your background. Thank you so much. You don't know how, you don't know how healthy you've made my mind. Oh, my love, I love you. Um, so how did I get all this knowledge? Um, uh, you know, part of it is my is my actual design. Like like you know how Albert Einstein was like really good at math, and it was just normal and natural for him to be good at math. I'm the same way with social sciences, so sociology, psychology, anthropology, biology you know, behaviorism, understanding the human nature. I have a very intuitive understanding, but I'm also extremely curious. And so I do a lot of research just for fun. So my, my pleasure is educating myself. So I get a lot of knowledge because it's just pleasurable for me to gain all this knowledge. Um, and then there's also like intuition, like, you know, the voice, capital T, capital V, that will guide me on things. Like the night where I was trying to write my first seminar and I was like, oh, 
because like all these ideas, like 20 years worth of knowledge was trying to come out at the same time and it was jamming in my mind and I'm like, oh, I need a new brain. And like, and I said it in my head, I didn't even say it out loud. I said in my head, I said it, and I know I said it in my head because I thought about this after, like, did I say that out loud? Because that was way too coincidental. So, I said, oh, I need a new brain. And I open up Facebook and I go scroll, 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 and then Harvard study, eight weeks to a better brain. I was like, what? I read it, it was about meditation. Um, and I, I started immediately that night. So, so it is a lot of things are coming together in order for me the person in order for me to be the person that can bring you so much. Like even my history has been designed to give you what you need, right? Like I picked the cheaters, I picked the beaters, um, and now here I am telling you how you can stop doing that and get out of those situations. So my existence is here for you and i fully believe that i this like i i was born to be of service to you so that's why i'm so good because i'm literally custom made to do this my from the moment i was born the people i was born to all of this has been designed so i can give you what i give you does your husband watch a reader stuff no he doesn't um because he doesn't he doesn't want to feel any kind of way about what i say and so, you know, he, like, like you'll see him every now and then because he loves and supports me. And that's, that's like you, the, there's just, he loves me so much. It makes me stumble, right? Like it's just, he loves me so much. He loves me too much to watch my stuff because he knows if he did, he might want to say something about what I say and he would feel something about it he will feel he might feel negative about something i say because i get brutally honest i really do and you guys have seen that i'm very transparent um and so he doesn't want to have any kind of feelings of or opinions about what i say or do so he doesn't consume it at all in order to give me that that free reign that i need to do what i'm doing because if he did if he came at me and he knows this if he came at me and said I don't want you to say that. I'd be like, sorry. And so we might have a conflict about it because I'm not going to change what I say and he might want me to change. And so that's a conflict right there. And so in order to not have the conflict, he says, I'm just, I'm just not, not my thing, not my business. She, she's going to do her thing. She's happy doing her thing. That's not my business. I'm a Scorpio and he's a Gemini. Look at you. Look what we got guys. Oh my goodness. Hello, baby. Hello, Charlie. You want to say hi to your fans? Hi. Hello. That's my baby. Yeah, I'm a Scorpio and he's a Gemini. Cop partner looking at our waitress. They say they were just zoning out. I have no thoughts about that. I don't think you should try to micromanage other people's eyeballs. You make me feel level-headed. I love it. Love your dedication. Thank you. <clears throat> sounds like god's design you have a lot of common sense thank you my love what are your knowledge sources um so peer-reviewed studied online it's like like i'll get into a theory and then i'll just go go read peer-reviewed studies and see if my theory lines up um so i get ideas and then i, I research this line of thought to see how it measures up to the science that's been done um so there's there's that uh i used to read a lot a lot albert einstein used to sit in a bathtub and wait for answers to come to him yeah absolutely lead with our strengths that's an awesome way to put it you're so welcome how do we join a coaching session uh so go to my bio click on the link tree click the coaching button it takes you to a page follow the instructions and you can book yourself in I like that you respect each other's work. We really do. Like, I, I don't try to pull him out of his work. He can work all the hours he wants. Um, most of the time when I go to events, parties, dinners, uh, I go alone, like 95% uh, like of the time. Uh, he's always welcome to come with me, but 95% of the time he works instead. He'd rather work because it would stress him out to not get the work done. Um, but there's 5% of the time where either he decides he wants to come or I say we, not I, 
and I've taught him, I say, when I say I'm going to, he can come if he wants. If I say we are going to, motherfucker's got to make the time. What order did you write your books or did you work on multiple at once? So I, so there was some multiples um, uh, at one point. That was, a, that was crazy. Um, so the order that I wrote them in was no more assholes first. This was my first baby. Uh, so this one was how to find the right partner, get in the right relationship. Then I wrote after the first kiss. This was actually inspired by my first coaching client because I coached her through the no kissing for three months uh, period. And then and she, she did it with somebody and they got into a relationship and then they went into an insecurity phase. So this was inspired to keep people from going into an insecurity phase after they've done the no kissing for three months and found themselves a good man. Then I wrote two simultaneously because I'm bananas. That was Come Back Queen and Fix That Shit. So Come Back Queen is the book that uh, helps you get over a breakup. That's this baby right here. And then Fix That Shit is a book that helps you have zero fights in your relationship. Then I wrote, was it Dating 101 or Fake Love Me Not Apply? I think it was Dating 101 next because I, like I kept giving, like I go to book signings and I'd give parents who had teenage daughters no more assholes, but I felt kind of wrong doing that. Uh, okay, no, so I wrote Fake Love Me Not Apply next, um, How to Avoid Posers, Losers, Scammers, and Predators. Then I wrote Dating 101. Then I wrote Say Yes to Goodness. Um, this is 10 Steps to a Complete and Happy You. Then I wrote Custom Made. I thought Say Yes to Goodness was going to be my last book. Mm -hmm. The universe said, no, you're wrong. Uh, you have to write this one, Custom Made. Um, this is Uncover Your Purpose and Light That Shit Up. Uh, answers to questions. What is my purpose and my passion and how can I monetize it? It is a workbook. Um, and I thought this was unrelated to relationships until you guys started coming to me and talk to me, talking to me about being codependent. And I realized, oh, this is what's supposed to, what's supposed to fill your time when you're codependent. So then I thought that was my last book. But then I realized, oh, I got lots more books to write. So many books to write. Uh, and then the men were like, we want a book. And I said, okay, my men's, here's your book. So The Perfect Play is the book that helps men get into a relationship with a generous long-term thinker. Ah, uh, wait, I need all these books. <laughs> so there was somebody on my live earlier today she has the entire collection except for dating 101 she says that's her purchase next week and she's gonna have the whole collection which is adorable adorable i love you guys love my super fans what time span did you write all those so many i started writing in 2015 i had no more assholes done and um ready to go january 2016 not only was I writing these books, but then I would go back and go write next editions. So um, all these guys here have more than one edition because I went back and, and reworked them just a little bit. So yeah, Mama was pretty crazy. So since 2015, that's nine books since 2015, nine books, what are we, six years, nine books in six years. I got them all, but the one for guys, awesome. Love that, love it. I love, oh, I love you, I love you. My loves do leave reviews on Amazon when you've read my books. <clears throat> do you ever want children? No, I got my tubes tied. I love my life, it's so uncomplicated. Um, I have zero regrets. I see how busy moms are, I see how stressful that is. Um, I, I see people who are, are so lost um, you know it, it's like never-ending work um, uh, no time for themselves the the you know they feel like they're always of, of service to others so I really I really have no regrets about not having kids um, my husband has two I get to enjoy the byproduct of that uh, you're amazing. I'm starting out. Which ones do you recommend starting with? So if you're single, no more assholes. If you're in a relationship, fix that shit. But I do have a what book is right for you quiz in the link to my bio. So if you go 
and tap into that quiz. It'll list all my books in the order that you want to read it in. So, do you believe in God? No disrespect, honestly, just curious. Yes, no, I love curiosity. Curiosity is, is such a beautiful trait. Um, so, I believe in energy. Um, <laughs> I said this I said this on a live and some people were like, oh, um, I am God. Because for me, the definition of God is creator, right? Which is your definition of God, is creator. But I believe in energy and I believe we can manifest and so when we become intentional with our thoughts and our energy, we can manifest what we want in our lives. We can create the lives that we want. And so I feel that we are all empowered in, in a creator way. Um, and so we really truly are all divine beings. We are all what you would call God because, you know, this, like the ideal of God is a divine creator who creates goodness and eliminates negativity right like like the, isn't that the purpose of god is to is to understand how to create goodness in your life and create goodness in other people's lives and so if we do that are we not all god what did i do before coaching i was a stripper you guys should have seen me. Oh my God. So I became like spiritual, right? Like I got into meditation, spirituality, all that stuff um, while I was stripping. So here I am, mid twenties, stripping, preaching this naked girl in the, in the strip club, basically like preaching to guys who were like, uh, like I could see the confusion on their face because I'm all excited about this, right? And oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. Uh, we, we are all so cute here, little gods being humans for now. I love that. I love that. Yes. Do you drink alcohol? Sometimes. Here's because you look so amazing. Sometimes. Sometimes I can go like like long stretches of time without drinking any alcohol. And sometimes I hit the sauce for a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah. And I mean, by hit the sauce, I mean like one or two glasses of wine a day. Um, not, not overly, but yeah. How is your husband and ex with your choice? I've never dated, well, no, I did have one boyfriend who had a problem with me stripping and I did stop um, because he didn't like it. Um, he was actually the one where I, I had the no more assholes moment, like no more assholes. Um, yeah, he was, oh, he was so terrible. Um, I did stop for one and then I, I, I picked up again um, when I was with my first husband, before we got married, when I was with him, we were uh, living in an apartment and we started talking about getting a house together. Um, so I said, like he said, I, I have my half for a mortgage because I have an inheritance from my grandparents. Um, and I said, well, I can go make my half um, by going back to stripping. Would you be okay with that? And he was like, yeah, no problem. So I did, I did. And he was, he was so hyped about it. Like, you know, like I, so I, I, I created gold envelopes, right? Like, so we're buying a house. Um, so I had like an envelope for like new washer and dryer, um, you know, new fridge and stove, uh, new couch, new bedroom set, right? And I created all these, all these gold envelopes and, uh, and I come home at night and I put my money in the gold envelope and I started filling all these envelopes with money. And, uh, so one night he was, I was like, Hey, like, look at all this money. He's like, I was, and he took it and he laid it out on the floor and he took a picture of it because it's like all these stacks of cash. Do you have them in different languages? I don't have my books in different languages yet. How did you get published? I self-published. I self-published. You need, I don't need an envelope for you. Hit the sauce. Hero's journey. Love that. Hello, queen. Guys have tunnel vision. I want to strip to pay for university. Do it. Do it. Do it, do it, do it. 
My boyfriend used to call me socially inept. Is this okay? You well used to. Like he doesn't he doesn't say that anymore. Like when was the last time he said that? You guys, it's really boring when you continuously come here and complain about your boyfriend and just find different things to complain about your boyfriend. Um, stop doing that. Stop doing that. Stop asking me the same question in different ways. If I'm, if I'm, if, if you want advice, come get a coaching session. If you want advice particular to your situation, but if, if the red flags are there, if it's evident he's a selfish short-term thinker, stop asking me the questions and just dump him. Get no more assholes. Do better, my love. Do better. Do better because the problem is you. The problem is you're choosing him. The problem is you're staying, right? The problem isn't what they're doing. The problem is the fact that you're staying for them to continue doing it. I'm on the verge. Um, right in the middle of leaving a toxic narcissist. Good. Your words of encouragement are everything good. Good, 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 good. Get it done. Get it done. Get it done. Get it done, my love. Get it done. Get it done. Chantal won't string you along so you book more sessions. She wants the best for you. I do. I do. I do. I do. Uh, I don't feel like I'm good enough for anyone. That would require a coaching session if you want to change that, my love. You could get no more assholes, by the way, and do what's in that book. It is some like the instructions that I give in here do settle your emotions, help you understand how to increase your confidence and your courage and your self-esteem if you do the work in the book. Uh, called off dating for the moment and got a dog. <laughs> One of these, because they're really awesome. Oh, he's the best boy. Yes, mama loves you. Is he not the goodest boy? And look at this face. He's the sweetest boy. Hello, my cuddle puss. Mama loves you. I know, he's so cute. Hi. I love you. Yes. Look at the little tongue. Okay. Oh, oh, can we see the little, I don't know if you can see that. His little tongue is poking out. He's just hanging. He's the cutest boy. Uh, we count. Hello. Yes, you make a boy. <laughs> he's, yes, he's so content. Which book helps with self-esteem and confidence? Uh, no more assholes. I might want a coaching session because I have a horrible problem with going back or letting him back. Yes, come get a coaching session, lovely. He's so cute. Get rid of that and focus on yourself. And now my life is opening up. Good, good, good. Is it a bad idea to text my ex? I hope you're doing well. Yes, it is. Don't do it. The right person does not have an obligation to know your worth. You do the right one. Yes, we'll, we'll yeah. Trauma bonds make people stay. So here's the thing. <clears throat> you can create a label or believe a label and, and just go, that's why, that's why, that's why. Or you can say, no excuses. I deserve better. I'm getting this done. I'm getting my plan in order. I'm getting the fuck out. So what are you going to say to yourself? What are you going to say to yourself? Because you can say, the reason why I'm staying is because of trauma bonds. You can say that to yourself all day, every day. Or you can say, I'm done. I'm done. This is not right for me. This is not okay. I deserve better. I'm leveling up. I have a Frenchie. My friend Deidre has a Frenchie. Uh, how many sessions do you do a day? So today I did, yesterday I did three. I think today I did two. I think tomorrow I have two booked. Uh, 
Oh, today was today was three. Yeah, today today was three. Yesterday was two, and then I got two booked tomorrow. I'm a Doberman. What's the shedding like? Yes, I do couple sessions as well. Yeah, I, I absolutely do couple sessions as well. You can, by the way, if you're in a relationship, you can come alone, um, right? My husband has never read this book, but we have an incredible relationship. Uh, so you can come alone. It's just because you're in a relationship doesn't mean you both have to come to a session. I can I can help your relationship through you. Um, if you two want to come together, that's absolutely fine. When you book a session, you can bring whoever you want. It is up to you. Anybody can, you can give your sessions away if you wanted to. It is when you buy a purchase, it is yours to do with as you please. You use it when you want and, and you bring who you want. It's, it's all yours. We talk about whatever you want. What would I do if my man cheated? Instant dismissal. The contract is monogamy. In this relationship, the contract is monogamy. If you step out of the relationship, the contract is null and void. Therefore, the relationship is null and void. We are no longer together. If you want us to stay together, we must renegotiate a new contract. You're welcome. I'm just asking lots of questions because it's fun to break up all boring questions. You're cute. You're cute. Do I smoke? Not cigarettes. I wish I could afford a puppy, yes. Charlie's a good as boy. How to cope with the breakup? Get come back queen, it's gonna help you. How do you trust? Uh, you, it's, it's all in who you choose, right? You need to choose a trustworthy partner. So once you have chosen yourself a trustworthy partner, then you do the work to trust that person. And that means uh, changing your thought patterns so you can change your emotions, so you can change the behaviors you feel compelled to do. In addition to that, you need to meditate to shrink your amygdala and increase your hippocampus. So shrink the part of your brain that creates stress, fear, and anxiety. Increase the part of your brain that creates self-confidence. I keep going back to men I don't love. I think I'm bored and lonely. Help. So here's what you do. Grab no more assholes and conceptualize what a better relationship will be so you'll be inspired to leave this behind and find something better. Where can I buy the books? You can get them on Amazon or anywhere you buy books online. But I do get a little bit more if you get them off Amazon. If you want an audiobook, Fix That Shit is the one that's available now. You can get it through the link tree in my bio. In which book do you talk about avoiding parent-child type relationships in uh, Fix That Shit? But you need to start with No More Assholes because you won't have that parent-child relationship if you pick a man, a generous long-term thinker. So start with the partner that you pick by using No More Assholes and pick a peer-peer partner, not somebody you feel they need to parent or somebody who wants to parent you. And then follow through with Fix That Shit to make sure you have a functional relationship. Love to fix that shit. I implemented things I've learned every day working on custom made now. I love you. Uh, how long are coaching sessions? They are one hour. Do you recommend dating apps? Yes, I do. do are my books in ebooks? Yes, they are ebook and paperback. And I have one audiobook, which is Fix That Shit, um, available through the link tree in my bio only, not on Audible. What are your thoughts on starting as friends and not putting a label or expectations? In other words, hanky-panky? Totally fine, but don't fall for your friends with benefits and then get upset that they don't want a relationship. Uh, how to cope in a narcissist relationship after you are married and then they're revealed? Uh, don't be in a relationship with a narcissist. So just because you're married doesn't mean you can't leave. Right? have your boundaries. I will not be in a relationship with somebody who does those narcissistic behaviors, whatever they may be. Tips for a dating profile. Um, make your, your write-up short and sweet, concise about who you are with something funny in there to make them smile. That picture, don't make it you being sexy. Make it you doing something you want to do with your future partner. 
<laughs> to avoid STDs, don't have sex with people until they go to the doctor and go get their all clear test. Uh, boyfriend ignoring me and being rude since I got a place to move out, set boundaries, and he won't change. So goodbye. Goodbye. I'm not, I'm not here to change you, and I'm not here to put up with shitty behavior. So if you don't want to be a good partner, that's your choice. That's your choice. Um, doesn't look like this is going to work between us because, you know, you're rude. Um, so do you, boo-boo. You do you, if you don't want this to work between us, that is your choice, my love. You work so fast, my ADHD brain, my ADHD brain loves it. How many red flags are too many? Um, depends what the red flag is. Oh, no hanky pinky love, what? Been single by choice for seven years after a bad divorce. What book should I use to get back into dating? That would be No More Assholes. I got booted out. Oh, no, I don't know if your comment went through. Friends without benefits first to get to know. Friends without benefits. Yeah, that's the no kissing for three months dating rule. That's what I talk about. Uh, those of you who want a notification when I go live, click my picture up here once or twice. You're going to get a pop-up and the pop-up is a bell. Click on the bell. Thought about me today. What was the context? What was the context? Uh, hmm. Do Favorite characteristic your husband has, he's, I mean, okay, like affection, absolutely 100%. Um, uh, there's so much, you guys, like you asking me to narrow it down to like one is, is just, uh, um, so I love his affection, love his affection, love his affection. His, he's so funny. Nobody makes me laugh more than he does. Um, and that's something that he, like, my friends after 10 years are now starting to say, oh my God, I never knew Dennis was so funny. I'm like, uh-huh. <laughs> Looks like you're starting to get to know him. Um, because he's, he's a man, right? And men reveal themselves slowly. You don't, you don't, you don't, they're not, they're not trying to dazzle you and fool you, right? They're watching you, observing you, seeing if you're worth understanding who they are and as they get to know you then they show you more and more about who they are um and so my friends are finally starting to understand how funny my man is because he is he's 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 funny he's goofy he's intelligent um he's witty so he's he's got those snap answers they're awesome so i love his affection and i love his humor i think those are two amazing traits but he has a lot of really really great traits like you know the level of patience this man has his his work ethic is through the roof um his responsibility like his financial responsibility is incredible um he's he it's just everything about him he's so kind he's so gentle he's so patient uh he's, he's such a good man he's such such a good man he's so understanding he's so intelligent um there's a lot there's a lot guys don't ask me to narrow it down say so list all the things you love about him that's so much easier than than me trying to put one thing above another because all of them make him such a great man and i'd i'd hate to see one of them go away because he really is such a complete package he's a 12 out of 12. yeah somebody just right now sounds like he checks all 12 traits in your book he sure is he is my template when I talk about what a man is, I am describing my husband. I really am. Uh, he truly is my template. Uh, but so here's a little something about No More Assholes some of you might not know. Um, when I wrote the 12 character traits, I asked myself, what defines my husband? Um, what makes him the man he is, right? And and that, you know, like all my writing is very inspired. It just whoosh comes out. Um, those seven traits that men look for in women, 
that was pure inspiration. Like that was like automatic writing. And I just wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote. And then it felt like it was done. And I went, mm, it's a nice list. And then I took it to men, right? I kept going up to men. I'm like, hey, take a look at this. Uh, would you add anything more to this? They're like, no, it's pretty complete. So divine intervention. Do you think there are any specific words we shouldn't use to communicate with men? Um, <laughs> yes, I do. I sure do. Um, so, uh, men don't like to be told what to do, right? They have a very strong, don't tell me what to do reaction. Uh, they also get a sphincter clench. So to, to the notion that you are going to give them shit, if they think you're going to give them shit, sphincter clench. So you don't want the sphincter clench and you don't want the pushback. So never say to them, we need to talk. Never say that because you'll get the sphincter clench and they'll go in defensive mode. Uh, what you do want to say is, baby, there's something I want to talk to you about. When would be a good time? You empower them to choose a listening time. They feel respected. They will set up a time and then you can talk about what you need to talk about. Um, don't start, like if you want them to do something, it's, uh, I'm not telling you what to do, you're free to do what you want. That's how that conversation starts. Don't go to them and say, uh, baby, you really need to do this. Because then it feels like you're ordering them around and that's a parent-child dynamic and they don't like that. Uh, been dating for two years after divorce, getting frustrated, should take a break or keep trying. Have you read No More Assholes? How do you know if you have a narcissist boyfriend? Narcissist people don't care about anybody but themselves. My friend doesn't reach out first. He didn't wish me a happy birthday. We talked about plans. That's I No, it's totally fine. That sounds like me. Sounds like me all day, every day. All day, every day. I don't tell my friends happy birthday. I rarely reach out first. I'm very responsive when they reach out to me and let me know that they... Uh, want to talk or hang out very responsive but um i'm too busy to start a conversation so my friends understand when they want me and they need me to reach out um i have friends that <clears throat> most of my friends if i reach out to them i might not hear back for days i might not get a response back sometimes months honestly like my friend taylor she's notoriously bad with getting back to people but we just accept each other. We, we know it's a constant presence. And if any one of us wants the other person at any time, then we just reach out. But we don't take it personally if the other person doesn't get back to us quickly. Uh, can you explain the learning classes that are coming up? Yes. Oh, this is exciting. Okay. Um, so I am doing a 12 week program, you guys, in August. Um, and, and so what this is going to be is you're going to have five live sessions with me every week. Two of them are a workout. One of them is a cooking class. One of them is a fireside chat where I bring you a special guest or a special topic or do a Q&A with you. And one of them is a soul session where we're going to do meditations, manifestations, intention setting. So these are included in that 12 week membership that you take part in. In addition to that, you're going to get 75% off the classes that I'm going to launch during that time. I'm going to be doing workshops, all kinds of workshops. So I'm going to have dating workshop, relationship workshop, publishing workshop, book writing workshop, business launch workshop, marketing workshop. Um, what else am I going to be doing during that time? I'm also probably going to be doing some additional random lives. Oh, I'm also going to be giving you guys a uh, discounts on coaching. Uh, I don't, I don't know my love. I don't, I don't see your question. Lovely. I live. I can see clearly now when the rain is gone. 
You can. Can I book a business coaching session? Absolutely. I want to switch from being a therapist. Yes, 100% you can. Um, yes. So go to my bio, click on the link tree, click that coaching button, book yourself in for a session, and we will address whatever it is you want to do. There is no refunds. Yep, yeah, absolutely. I, I want you to be sure too. I don't do sliding scales, my love, I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't see it. Oh, 847W. <laughs> You're being called out. That's cute. Uh, if I never reached out to my friend first, I feel like we would never talk again. How is that fair? Listen, it's it's just about understanding, right? Like, um, it, you 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 can you can create an expectation, um, right? You can say it's not fair that I'm always the first one to reach out, or you can simply reach out when you want to talk to them. Are they responsive, right? The the it's it's not, um, you know, who's reaching out first is. Are they happy to hear from you? Are they responsive to you? Uh, I'll work to connect with you soon, lovely. I'm good. Is my boyfriend liking non-provocative photos of old coworkers okay? Um, I, I, I don't really see the problem with that. I am good in my way. I'm gonna be a bright, sunshiny day. What is the time? Hello, lovely. Midnight. Uh, what are my hobbies outside of this? I don't have any. If I if I were to have a hobby outside of this, I'd say eating all you can eat sushi. That would be my hobby outside of this. I also walk my dogs. Uh, I mean, really educating myself. I would say that's a hobby to me. So favorite meal to cook? I have no favorite meals to cook. I don't like cooking. I wish I had a cook. Who wants to come be my cook? Who wants to come be my cook? I need somebody to like come make meals and stick them in my fridge and then I can just reheat them um, and serve them. I need somebody to make me food every week so I don't have to worry about food. Can somebody do that? Is there somebody in Ontario who can make me some food? Because I'm just so not good at this. Any book recommendations to prep young girls about getting into relationships? Yes, my love, there it is. So what you want is Dating 101. That is the book that I wrote for our teenagers. Um, boys and girls, they's, um, everybody. Dating 101, if you're younger, is, is the right book for you. Girl, I'm in Canada, happy to order you some food. <laughs> That's cute. You, you make a mean schnitzel, awesome. Same, to be honest, yes. Uh, any books on just being social and making good connections with others? Um, Fake Love Need Not Apply does talk quite a bit about that because if you keep picking losers, scammers, and predators, you are susceptible. And part of the reason why you are susceptible is because you don't have strong social ties. So I do get rather detailed on how to create stronger social ties in order to not fall for these type of guys anymore. Is the book appropriate for preteens? Um, yes and no. Some parts yes, some parts no. I would suggest you get it and read it and then use the chapters that you think they are ready for and, and have those conversations. Talk about that or say, hey, let's read this chapter together. Um, 
So, I mean, read it first and see what you're comfortable with your child learning at that time. Ooh, just got comeback queen today. So exciting. Uh, that's so important on social ties. Yes, stronger social ties. Yes. What's the book again? It's Fake Love Need Not Apply. Yes, food. Food. Favorite favorite thing about Canada? Healthcare. Free healthcare. Free healthcare. Um, we had a good COVID plan. And, uh, you know, generally speaking, right? Like COVID happened and they're like, $2,000, stay home. $2,000, stay home. Um, right? So they were, they were fast on that, making sure people could stay home and be okay with it. Um, I, so those are two things I really liked about Canada is I feel that Canada does a good job of looking out for its people. I, I, I'm, I feel very happy and lucky to be living in Canada. Mm -hmm. survivors of abuse i've worked with are so isolated and become distrusting yeah yeah i tried women are from venus men are from mars and talked about chapters with my spouse awesome what was the book again okay if you're uh reading a book to help your relationship have you dived in to fix that shit yet any tips for introverts when you're trying to date? Uh, read No More Assholes and do what's in there to reduce your social anxiety. I agree. We are lucky to be living in Canada, yes. Oh, thanks to you. I'm out of my toxic relationship. We got a freedom bell. We got a freedom bell. I love this. Thank you, my love. Oh, I lost sound. Did anybody else lose sound? Can somebody say, oh, I'm back. I got it. I love it. Love it. Uh, I don't read books except for school, but I want to read yours this summer. Yeah. I copied and pasted my question at least 50 times. I think it's because I used the three letter word. Mm, maybe. I was Maybe it could be. It could be. Ooh. That's funny. <laughs> You're so cute. Freedom Bell was wondering how do I speak to my girlfriend about doing more? Uh, oh, um, I only do those questions on coaching sessions. I don't address them on lives. Love that. Can you guys hear the rain? Do you do remote sessions? All of my sessions are over Zoom. All of my sessions are over Zoom. I love that we're hanging out together this Friday, y'all. Yes, we do. Uh, is dating a guy stuck in his comfort zone bad? I don't think so. Can you meet him in his comfort zone? I love you and your wisdom. Thank you. By the way, people are allowed. Uh, people are allowed to have their comfort zones and you're allowed to do what you want, right? Like, you know, uh, there's, there's somebody recently, they love to travel, but their partner doesn't like to. That's okay. They don't have to travel. Go do your thing. Go have fun. Um, go have fun. Go have fun. It's totally fine. So if your partner's a homebody, like my, my husband just prefers to work. My husband prefers to work. Um, then go out and socialize. So I want to go out and socialize. So I go out and socialize. His comfort zone is at work. My comfort zone is talking to people. So it's okay for us to be different and choose to do different things and have different lives. And, and we come back, we converge, we converge, we come back to each other and we go, how was your day? I had a good day. How was your day? I had a good day. Kisses and hugs, right? Kisses and hugs, loves and cuddles, uh, support, cheerleading. Baby, I sold 80 books today. Wow, good for you, right? So um, we have, a, and I'm, I'm so proud of my husband too. Like I, I, I'm super proud of him and I tell him that. Do you guys have schedules to spend together? Nope. 
we make the minutes count. We like you see us where we we you know, we have these moments. We have these moments and they're so sweet and they're so tender and they're so meaningful and they just you know, like, like that happiness that we have in those moments, it, it doesn't go away when we leave each other's presence. It stays. It lingers. What does he do for work? He bends metal. My man is a metal bender. He, he wears a blue onesie all day long. My man owns forklifts and cranes and machines. He's, he's so funny. He has a fleet of vehicles. He's got like three pickup trucks, um, a cube van, a minivan, a Nissan. The Toyota. Oh, the Cutlass. He brought the Cutlass out today. I was like, oh, look at that car. He's got a four-door. I think it's a 69 Cutlass. Um, what else? What else is part of the fleet? Um, he's got a, a old BMW. He's got a GMC. So many cars. My, I call him a car. Uh, what is it? A car hoarder. But he buys used cars. He gets them for like cheap but like good like in good order like good working order it doesn't have to be pretty his like the nissan is so beat up um but you know he buys uh cheap cars with good engines and just drives and drives and drives them that's what people are saying do you like interior design i wish i was better at it to be honest how do you know when he's engaged in you uh, if you use a no kissing for three months, uh, no kissing for three months dating rule, you'll definitely get a good idea of how interested he is in you. Uh, coaching sessions. If you're interested in a coaching session, go to my bio, click on the link tree, click the coaching button. It takes you to a page. You can take a look at the options and see if it's right for you. How true is the saying opposites attract? There's got to be some common ground at least. A hundred percent. Yeah. I, I more believe in like attracts like. Will fix that shit teach you how to be a good partner in a relationship? Yes, it will. Yeah. And if if your partner is a generous long-term thinker who loves you, it was going to have a magical effect if you do what's in that book. What does it mean when somebody is overly reassuring when you never ask for it? It means they worry more about you than you worry about the relationship. My boyfriend doesn't respond to my texts, but is active on Instagram. Should I not be bothered? Yeah, you should not be bothered. That's fine. When you send a text, don't don't go look at what they're doing. Send a text. Get on with your life. Where do you meet men? Everywhere. Men are literally everywhere. Online is a good place, though. What does it mean when a guy hugs you very tightly after a date? Uh, it means he wants to squish your boobs against his chest. Journaling tips for beginners. Okay, so what you need to understand is that what you write doesn't need to make sense. So um, the reason you want to journal is to work through your thoughts um, and, and sort of be able to understand your thoughts a little bit better right and what happens is is your thoughts are like spaghetti inside your head every sentence is a piece of spaghetti cooked spaghetti inside your head and it's all you know like a bowl of spaghetti it's all mixed in together it's all jumbled um and so when it gets all jumbled up like that it's hard to understand yourself and so when you go to journal what you're going to do is write the first thing that comes to mind Whatever it is, it doesn't matter if it's a word, if it's a question, if it's a statement, whatever it is, just write it down. And the next thing you think of, write it down. If it's a question, write it down. If you think of an answer next, write the answer down. But whatever comes up next, whatever it is, just write it down. Just write it down, write it down, write it down, write it down. And this is going to help your thoughts become more organized. At the end of your writing, you might understand yourself a little bit better. I've got tons of journaling uh, like strewn around this place, guys, for, for real life. Um, and I go back and I read what I wrote, it makes no sense. Um, and it doesn't need to. So don't think it needs to make sense. It's just a process of getting your thoughts out so that you better understand yourself. 
Any advice? Me and my boyfriend fight and argue a lot. Yes, my love. Get fixed that shit. Do what's in that book. If he's a selfish short-term thinker, though, this isn't going to work. You need to be with a generous long-term thinker. If you don't know what you're with, get no more assholes. Look at the 12 character traits. Grade his paper on the 12 character traits. Do you type your books? I do. I do. I do. Brain. Love it. What is that? What is, is that flower? What is that, my love? What's your brain? I love your honesty. Thank you. He looks at my stories on Instagram, but he doesn't respond to my texts until hours later. Is that bad? No, it's not. No, but what is bad is that you are micromanaging his behavior. You are watching over him like you are parenting him and want to control his behavior. Text him, put the phone down, get back to living. Don't go look at what he's doing. Favorite TV show? Uh, uh, Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty. Uh, my favorite success story. I uh, so there's one that pops up in my head. And I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say it's a favorite success story, but it's it's one that just made me go ooh because I keep getting surprised at um, how my work affects people and and how it's good that I'm doing what I'm doing. Uh, of course, it's Rick and Morty, right? <laughs> Who here, who here knows what Rick and Morty is? Ah, it's so funny. Uh, so, um, what was I saying? I distracted myself. Oh no, 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 no. Success story, yes. So um, there was a girl who wrote me who got no more assholes and her 13 year old sister who was depressed and had low self-esteem started reading the book and this this girl wrote me because she was so ecstatic at how her sister was becoming more and more confident because of reading this book and i was just like oh, i was i was floored because i just went i i just i couldn't imagine this level of goodness um i love my existence i love that i'm here i love that i do what i do because it, it keeps surprising me with goodness. So. <laughs> I do. Yeah. I don't feel like I judge others, but I get told I do a lot. How do I know the truth? That is the truth. That is the truth, my love. Don't deny it just because you don't like it. <clears throat> so start monitoring what you say before you say it and do you know like question yourself before you say something say is this positive or is it negative if it's negative don't say it if it's positive then do say it i appreciate all your advice thank you you're so welcome how can i politely tell my boyfriend that his negativity is bringing me down um just just so here's what you're gonna say you're gonna say baby i love you but i try really hard to be optimistic and I find your pessimism sometimes is like you're peeing on my parade and it really sucks. And it's making me hesitant to come and say things to you because I'm afraid you're gonna say something negative and I'm just gonna feel bad. And just so you understand, as human beings, we are creatures that are designed to seek pleasure and avoid pain. And if every time I come and say something to you, it's met with negativity that feels painful to me. And it's bringing me to a place where I'm starting to wonder if I should come and say anything to you because it, I might just get peed on. Um, so is it possible for you to be less negative when I come and talk to you about stuff? Drink water. That is a good plan. Boyfriend and I were supposed to spend time yesterday, but he never called. Not the first time it happens. Um, so here's what you do. Make plans for yourself as though he's going to do that. 
right? So don't leave time aside for him to fill just to be disappointed that he's not filling it. Do what you want to do when you want to do it. I'm 25, he's 35, went on a first date. Last Saturday, date went amazing. No hookup, but no text yet. So we no more assholes. You should not just be seeing one person at a time. Don't be disappointed if somebody is not pulling through. But after your date, did you text them, by the way, and say, hey, I had a great time. Thank you for, and I appreciate that. And I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Uh, so I shouldn't talk to him about it. I don't understand what that's associated to, my love. I'm sorry. What if you told him you'd made make a decision in three months, but you're just not sure? What if you told him? Uh, don't understand what that's about, love. My boyfriend's previous crush is much prettier than me. Why is he with me if his standards are higher than me? So you think his standards are only based on looks or is he the kind of person who values people for their integrity and personality? What kind what kind of guy is, is he? Is he is he just a looks guy or does he value integrity and personality? Why do guys not want to get married? Cuz we complicate it. We make it fucking expensive. That's why. We make it expensive. Yeah, spend twenty thousand dollars on a day. Are you kidding me? You can buy a car. Fucking buy a car. Like, like men, men, right? Men are efficient, and some of them are like, uh, marriage, twenty grand for a day. Fuck. If you make it cheap and sign a prenup, by the way, never be with somebody who isn't fair and generous. But if you were to be like. Let's do city hall. Let's we'll dress up. We'll go to a friend's house after for orders. We'll we'll city hall, very small, just the closest people. Go to a friend's house after, have some things to eat. Um uh I'll sign we'll sign a prenup. What's yours is yours, what's mine is mine. You'll see a lot more men being okay with getting married. How do you make monogamy exciting? You Pick yourself a talented lover. Uh, so it's normal that he never called and not a red flag. Uh, my love, so if you guys have follow, like backup questions to your question, come get a coaching session because I can't do a coaching session on a live. <clears throat> Isn't he supposed to be the one to reach out? Oh, you didn't text him after a date? Guy's supposed to pursue in court first. Don't play games. That's a game. That's a game. Tell him what you think. Tell him what you feel. Start this off on the tone. You want a relationship to go on open and honest about who you are. Open communication. Um, if you're not communicating, hey, I had a good time. Thank you for this. I appreciate that about you. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. And then you wonder that he hasn't reached out. Well, he's going, I don't know if she had a good time or not. Right? So let him know what you're thinking. Is a prenup always a must? My husband wanted it, you know. So listen, if if that's what they want, like, oh, fine. Yeah, of course. I'm not going to... I'm not going to try and, you know, take what you work hard for. What's But he's generous, right? My husband is generous. And this is the key. Don't get in a relationship with somebody who is not fair and generous. Uh, should you be sure you can end up with the person forever before you commit to a relationship? Use that no kissing for three months dating rule. Um, and, and really know who someone is and their intent and that your fundamental values align. You both want the same things. You have the same timelines. You are compatible. You enjoy each other's company. Use that no kissing for three months dating role. Read no more assholes. How successful are poly relationships? Uh, for some people, very successful. Hello. Are you my good boy? I know you came here for some cuddles. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. You came for some cuddles. Yes. Hello, Mama loves you. <laughs> uh, 
Hello. Oh, he's so cute. He's so cute. He's so cute. Puppy. Yes. Let me catch. Hello. Yes. Okay. Hi. Mama loves you. Tiny. Do you want some love? Oh, he's such a good as boy. I love how when I go to, um, I know he's so precious. I, I go to give him kisses and he always like, like comes in for the kiss. Hello. Hello. Yes, mama loves you. Yes, you're such a good boy. Hi. <laughs> such a good He's such a good. Hello, this is Charlie. Hello, Charlie. <gasps> Hi, what you doing? Hello, Mama loves you. He's so loving, yeah. I did turn him into a great big suck. Well, he was a big suck the moment I got him, right? Like the whole drive home, he was like, uh, like, like on this on my lap, but facing me. Of course, he was little because he was 12 weeks. Tw eight weeks? I got him at eight weeks, I guess. Yeah, eight weeks. Uh, how did you ask your husband to be your boyfriend? Uh, I... <laughs> oh, this is so bad. Uh, I told him I broke up with my husband. Because my first husband. Because we, we, you know, I knew him while I was still married. And, uh, yeah, I broke up with my first husband. And, uh, I told him that I wanted to be with him. Advice for trying to stop micromanaging your partner. I want to stop but anxiety fuels it, right? So you need to reduce anxiety. So what you're going to do is you're going to grab fix that shit. You're going to learn how to manage your emotions and behaviors. A poly relationship is polyamorous. So loving more than one person. Uh, tell us the whole story. Oh, no, no, no. It's, it's, it's too much. It's too much. Uh, he's a Westie Poo. Hi, Charlie. He's so he's such a good boy. How to increase emotional intimacy? Yes. Um, get fix that shit. Do what's in that book because you need to understand that emotional intimacy comes with emotional safety. Emotional safety happens when there is consistency of behavior. So you need to follow the instructions in fix that shit. In addition, make sure you're getting in two, like minimum two kisses a day for minimum five seconds each to create a chemical that's going to make you very happy with each other. Hello. Where are you? Hello. Where are you going? Where are you going? You going to stay with mama? Mama loves you. Are you my big boy? Are you my big boy? Hi. What you doing? Oh, you're such a big boy. Hi. Oh, yes. Do you want this? Is that what we want? Yes. Are you my cuddle bug? Are you my cuddle bug? Are you my good boy? Are you my good boy? Are you listening to mama? You want to cuddle mama? You want to do this? Okay. Mama loves you. I know. Hi. Hi. <laughs> such a freak. He's such a freak. Puppy cuddles are the best. Yes. Uh, for ha first husband, my first husband was a long-term thinker. Um, he was a long-term thinker. Um, but there was no intimacy. We did not have intimacy in our relationship. Hello, I love you. Can I just, can I just maul you? Yes, I just want to maul you. I, I would give him kisses, but I have lip gloss on. I'm going to make his face sticky. Uh, they say if you really love someone, you should not be able to fall in love with another thoughts. Uh, I don't think we're designed that way. Um, we are not monogamous by nature. Monogamy is a, a cultural thing. Make no mistake. Um, I do choose it because um, I love my husband. I haven't always been monogamous with my husband. Uh, and I made that clear with him. I said, you will be my only man, but I will be with women as well. I may have girlfriends. Uh, and he's like, okay. So, yeah, yeah. I think we can love multiple people simultaneously for sure. Did you lose intimacy? We just never built it right in the first place. I was so damaged when I met him. I did not want a relationship. I did not want a relationship but he wanted me to want to be in a relationship with him and he didn't give up 
and I gave in. I gave in. What I mean by intimacy, kissing and sex. How old were you when you left your first marriage and made that leap? Uh, 29, five years, so 34. 34, I think. Yeah, I'd say 34, around there, 34-ish. Maybe? Just started raining in Toronto. Ah, uh, you get the rain that we just had here, maybe. How can you tell if your partner is driven and career focused? Um, it's in their behaviors. They work hard. They have dreams, ambitions. They're working towards goals. Uh, what did you learn your first marriage would not match up with this one? What did you learn? What did you learn your first marriage would not match up with this one? I don't understand what that means. How long do you think it takes for someone to actually fall in love? Uh, some people can fall in love quickly and it's, it's genuine um, because there is such thing as intuition and, uh, but not everybody has good intuition and some people take a long time to fall in love. <laughs> uh, my husband fell in love with me before I fell in love with him. Jealousy is a normal human experience. It sure is. It's whether you let that affect your behavior and respect. 100% my love. You answered your first marriage didn't have intimacy. Yes, okay. Are you poly? poly? I'm asking out of curiosity because I'm not sure if I could ever be poly because I fear jealousy. So I would say I'm not. Um, I So if... And, and even though I did say to my husband, I might have a girlfriend, like as in an actual girlfriend. And I was actually looking for a girlfriend at the time. And I did for years. I wanted a girlfriend. Um, but I, I didn't. I never, like I played with girls. <laughs> I, play, I, play. I played with girls. Uh, but I never had a girlfriend, like, like me in a relationship with another girl. Um... Uh, where was I going? Um, right, so I would have been Polly, right? If I had been in a relationship with him and had a relationship with an another girl, I would have been Polly. But I wasn't Polly, I was just bisexual. So I had a relationship with my husband and I played with other girls. Your voice is so calming. Do you do the audio of your books? I sure do. I sure do. I am 48. The jump. Any tips on getting over your own anxiety when dating? Yes. And No More Assholes is the book that's going to help you do that. It's going to help you understand how to reduce your fear and anxiety, increase your courage, increase your self-esteem, and, and, and... Oh, and date with confidence because you know what to go get. He was cool with not playing with other girls. Oh yeah, hundred percent. He was cool with that. He's very devoted, very loyal, very devoted. He's 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 like a one lady at a time kind of man. Life begins at forty, so you're actually eight years old. <laughs> I like this. That's super cute. Oh my god, that's adorable. How to tell if your partner is driven. They have goals and they are achieving those goals. What should I do if he distances himself? Uh, let him. We, all right? we can't control other people. Like a sociopath. What would you tell yourself at 25? Not a thing. Not a thing because I wouldn't change anything. Uh, the the only thing I would say is, do you, do you, boo-boo, do you? Because everything that I chose to do brought me here today. I would not change a thing because if I changed one thing, I might not be here. I might not be here and we don't want that now, do we? 
implement all the stuff you learned from these books. Yeah. I needed to go through all those experiences. At 25, I still had some shitty boyfriends to go through. Uh, I had one, I had two more shitty boyfriends to go through. Uh, and then a marriage that lacked intimacy. And then, and then I understood what I had when I, what I, when I had it, right? Is if I might not have appreciated my husband this much if I hadn't gone through what I'd gone through. I might not have understood just how amazing he is. Oh, that sucks. My boyfriend constantly ex uh, confuses experiences he did with his ex with stuff he did with me. Oops. My dog is so silly. Age difference in dating, as long as the youngest is 25 or up, it doesn't matter how big the difference is. Um, lovelies, uh, do you guys text when he's not home? No. No, we don't. It, I mean, just to give you guys an idea, like, my husband texted me, um, uh, at 5.55, baby, I don't need supper, I have yesterday still here, at 7.34, I said, okay, my baby, um, Right? Like, I can take hours and hours and hours to reply. It doesn't affect him. Because we don't, like, we we are solid, right? So, um, how much time it takes in between texts doesn't have an effect. Uh, lovely, so I'm going to have to go. It's time to go. It's time to go. Time to go. So, uh, so your brain is still forming up until you are, like, 24, 25. So if your brain is fully formed and you're dating somebody whose brain is not fully formed, it's like a university student dating a high school student. Um, so uh, I'm gonna go, if you guys want a notification when I go live, click my picture up here once or twice, you're gonna get a pop-up and the pop-up is a bell. Click on the bell when you do that, say I just did, you're so welcome. Say I just did. Uh, go follow, thank you, you're so lovely. Go follow me on Instagram, you guys. I'm giving away another coaching session soon. Go into the link tree in my bio. There's a button to book me for a coaching session. There's some freebies in there. Go grab your freebie. There's links to my YouTube channel and my podcast. Go check that out. I have a merch store. A bunch of people yesterday were buying my Dump the Motherfucker sweatshirts, which was awesome. Uh, so go get yourself a journal or some stickers or something if you want. I made, I made some stuff with some cool... Uh, things written on it that I think you might like. Um, just did. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do take a minute to go into your settings on TikTok. Turn on your notifications for when your favorite content creator goes live. Also go into your settings on your device and turn on your notifications there. I love you. I will be back tomorrow. You know I will because I never stay away for long. Got a couple coaching sessions to do tomorrow. Got to do some writing, but I will be popping in and doing a live. Thank you for sharing your time and wisdom with us. Enjoy the muesli. You know I will. Mwah. I love you, lovelies. I will see you soon.